From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Monday, August 10th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Black therapists have seen a growing number of African-American clients since the killing of George Floyd. St. Louis psychologist Ramiko Thomas says many are coming in to discuss the lingering trauma of police brutality and racism. We deal with a lot on a daily systemic basis. And then also we're having to pack it all in. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson speaks with Thomas about black people and therapy. Missouri is a red zone as the nation continues to battle the pandemic. Federal officials say they made that designation after more than 11 percent of coronavirus test results came back positive during a recent week. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports. The federal coronavirus task force recommends counties with positivity rates above 10 percent enact more restrictions, such as closing down gyms and bars. Unlike earlier in the pandemic, the cases are spreading widely throughout the state. Chris Prenner is a sociologist at St. Louis University who has been tracking coronavirus data. He says the majority of cases are still concentrated in major metropolitan areas, but the virus is now spreading throughout all parts of Missouri. Numbers outside of Kansas City and St. Louis continue to be really high. Uh, but without those connections to institutional outbreaks. Missouri Health Director Randall Williams says the red zone designation is a warning sign, but is still hesitant to recommend statewide restrictions. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. A panel of state legislators in Illinois will meet tomorrow to vote on emergency rules that could lead to fines on businesses that refuse to enforce public health guidance. Governor J.B. Pritzker says local public health officials have been asking for an enforcement mechanism that prioritizes education and support for businesses over shame and punishment. Unfortunately, the way the law is written today, there's only nothing or the misdemeanor that would result in the potential of removing their license. So what we wanted to do was to give something in between, and that's why this rule makes so much sense. Under the new rules, businesses, schools, and child care centers that do not require face coverings or disregard capacity limits would receive warnings. After that, a lack of compliance could result in fines of up to $2,500. The average daily number of new COVID-19 cases in Illinois is up 31 percent compared to a couple of weeks ago. Washington University and St. Louis University are decreasing their dorm capacities to minimize the spread of coronavirus. As St. Louis Public Radio's Kay Petron reports, some Wash U students say they are still scrambling to find a new home. When Wash U announced its new housing restrictions in late July, students flooded Facebook groups to find apartments. One is Alana Bader. She has to live with friends because of a disability that limits her mobility. She says it's been impossible to find an affordable apartment within her walking distance to campus. It has been an absolute nightmare. It's what have been some of the most stressful days I've had in months because everyone is fighting tooth and nail to get whatever is left this last minute in the game. Bader says the school's housing office hasn't returned her calls. WashU is trying to secure on-campus housing for some students with financial and medical concerns. The school is also working to connect students to private landlords. I'm Kay Petron, St. Louis Public Radio. Ferguson has remembered Michael Brown on the anniversary of his death. Yesterday marked six years since he was shot and killed by a former Ferguson police officer. Ceremony organizers painted a spot on the road where Brown died and flowers were laid on the ground. Current Ferguson police chief Jason Armstrong says work continues, quote, day in and day out to try to get to that place where we want to be where no matter what color you are, no matter what kind of uniform you wear, no matter where you're from or what you do, you can walk down the street and you can feel safe and you can be at peace knowing that you're in a safe space. And I think that's what we all want for our communities, for our families and for our children. That audio is from Five on Your Side. Brown's death sparked weeks of unrest in St. Louis. Current St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell reopened the case and announced late last month that he would not be filing charges against former police officer Darren Wilson. Since a Minneapolis police officer killed George Floyd in May, black therapists have been in demand. Many black people have sought counselors to help them cope with the stress of police brutality and systemic racism, 
along with the coronavirus and job losses. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson asked St. Louis psychologist Ramiko Thomas why having a black therapist is so important for many clients. One of the reasons that um, I feel that it's important, our diagnosis is important, is that um, looking for camaraderie and understanding, you know, going to therapy is very, it's a very humbling and a, a very, um, it's not an automatic experience, meaning that it's almost can, some people can feel intrusive. Um, and so, and, and can feel very uh, put on the spot. And so one of the reasons that um, we're seeing that people feel more comfortable in talking to providers that look like themselves is that there's this feeling of, okay, this person may not be the same person I am, but can at least understand or have some um, sensitivity to the response and what I'm going through. Why is prioritizing mental health so necessary for Black people? It's necessary because we deal with a lot on a daily systemic basis. So, you know, overt racism, covert racism, microaggressions. um, And then also we're having to pack it all in in order to go to work or in order to find jobs. And so... I think that as Black people to really address our mental health and address that, hey, we cannot do it all is humongous. It's also to really think about what is it like to normalize our mental health. And just within that itself, it'd be great if we start to look at self-care in a different way. And so I think that it's very beneficial, but also crucial for us to start looking at our mental health because it is impeding our progress and who we could ultimately be. What are some ways that the Black community can start demystifying the negative stigma that surrounds mental health? I think one of the things that I've noticed is some of the pastoral pastors and the churches have started talking about mental health and has in, have incorporated it into um, some of the sermons and talking about the importance of mental health and looking at mental health in a holistic form. So a lot of times we talk about physical health, we talk about whether it's blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, all of these things, but we don't really pay homage to mental health and what that can do within our, what mental health can do and how complex mental health is. And so it can also start with physical health and going to the physical physician and they can be more trained in talking to um, patients about mental health and that their physical um, difficulties that they may experiencing may be contributing or have a correlation to their mental health status too. And so more education I feel needs to be done when it comes to internists or physical doctors or specialists to start talking about mental health to their patients. And that can form a bridge between the two as well. That was psychologist Ramiko Thomas speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson. David Casares edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. Before we wrap up, the pandemic has forced Major League Baseball to postpone three more games for the St. Louis Cardinals. That's this week's series, specifically between the Cardinals and Pittsburgh Pirates. It was slated to begin today at Bush Stadium. The league says it wants to conduct additional testing before the Cardinals return to play. Ten Cardinals have tested positive for coronavirus so far. Another seven staff members have also tested positive. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.